Good morning, everyone. It's that time again, time for our Sunday school lesson. I'm having difficulty this morning, um, so I'll be drinking a little water. Um, the title of our lesson today is The Widow and the Unjust Judge, coming from Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> I had a little song in my spirit. I'm going to sing it, uh, just a little bit of it. <coughs> just a little bit of it. Um, and then we're going to pray. Overflow in this place. Have your way. <coughs> In this place, we want more. In this place, have your way. Because we can't talk without you. We can't walk without you. We can't live. Without you, have your way. <clears throat> Cause we can't walk without you. We can't talk without you. We're nothing without you. Have your way. And if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. And if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Have your way. <clears throat> and if it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. If it's not pleasing to you, take it out of me. Have your way. Overflow in this place, have your way in this place, we want more in this place, have your way. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for your precious blood that was shed on Calvary, asking forgiveness of all sins. And Father God, as you have, <clears throat> have set forth this word before us, we're just asking that you would be pleased, Father God. Have your way, Father God, as we study the lesson this morning, Lord God. It's a short lesson, but it has a lot of meat in it. So Father God, we're asking that you would write it up on the tables of our heart that we might not sin against you. We appreciate you so much for your love, your compassion upon all of your people, Father God. How you just woke us up this morning in our right minds, Lord God. Lord, we love you so much and appreciate you. If there's anyone out there, Lord God, that needs you in the pardon of their sins, we're asking that you would forgive them, Lord God, and save their souls. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. The lesson, normally I give two titles, but I'm only going to give one this morning, and it is The Widow and the Unjust Judge. It's coming out of Luke 18, 1 through 8, as I said. So Jesus uh, uses a parable, and he wants to have a, a, show us a point. And we know that all parables have a lesson. And so the lesson aim, uh, Jesus says in the very first verse, he says, men sh should always pray and not faint. And so I asked myself, why did Jesus pick this particular parable uh, to show the importance of consistent prayer? And so, of course, I thought about, well, the woman was persistent, even in the world, even with this unjust judge. And he uh, blessed her just because she was consistent. I mean, she kept 
uh, being consistent in her, her quest. And then I said, well, maybe it's because, uh, you know, the people would have, you know, compassion on the widow or dislike the judge or a combination of the two. And so it's, uh, let me know what you think, which one would be the better of, of the three. And I feel like it's just because she was consistent and letting us know that, you know, prayer is extremely important and that we should always pray. We should always be praying, um, there's so much injustice in the world, so many things that are going on around us, and we need to be in prayer. Shootings in the schools, um, and then uh, even just people shooting people randomly. Uh, it is extremely important that the saints be praying about these things. Uh, where is the prayer? Where are the prayer warriors? You know, people that lay before God to, to pray. Uh, remember the story of Jeremiah. Jeremiah laid on his side for years uh, to show the point of how long the children of Israel will be in bondage. So let me move on. I can get caught up in all kind of stuff because uh, the word is so vast and so rich. Uh, so the other thing I just want to say, Jesus, you know, he set the stage. He explained uh, he explains what he was uh, really trying to uh, express within the parable. Then he also sets the stage and gives us uh, the characteristics of the people that were involved in the parable. He says that the uh, judge, there was a, a woman in a city and there was an unjust judge who didn't fear God uh, or show respect for man or regard man is what they call it. And, and that uh, is when you look it up. Uh, in the um, strong, it tells you that that means that he didn't respect them. So the widow says, she says, avenge me, my adversary. So, of course, avenge, you know, she's asking him, you know, uh, take care of me. Take care of the situation. And she calls whoever it is an adversary, which means there's a problem there. That is her enemy, someone that is going up against her. And she's asking him, you know, show me some justice in this area. Avenge my adversary. And so it talks about that the unjust, uh, un, unjust judge, he says he waited for a while before he even did anything. And let me see, let me tell you what he says here. He says that even though he doesn't fear God, he specifies, even though he doesn't fear God or regard men or show respect for men, this widow's gonna trouble me if I don't do something. And so even in her consistency, uh, he was he was bothered by uh, her that she needed to be avenged. And he was not a believer. He didn't believe in Christ. So she had, I can just imagine, and this is just me and my Holy Ghost mind. I can imagine him, you know, going through to the market and this woman was there and she would ask him to avenge. And, and you know, in other words, she met him at the grocery store. And she was telling him, hey, I need you to avenge. I need you to do this, that, and it, or the other. Uh, he was maybe at the movies and, and she would be there and he would, um, and I'm just paraphrasing, trying to get him us a, a modern day you know, uh, at the grocery store, uh, getting gas or, or something. And she would continue to uh, tell him, I need you to avenge me in this matter. I need you to do something, you know, uh, show me some justice in this area. And so, um, and then uh, it, it shifts. Okay. First he, he does it. He says that he's going to do it because this woman going to keep bothering me. So I got to do something to alleviate my own suffering and stress. And so he, he was an unjust man. He didn't believe in God. And so sometimes you have to, you think about that. And you know how sometimes our children, our children will come and ask us and then we'll tell them no and they go away. Then they'll come. I'm telling you, this has happened to me with my kids. Uh, they'll come back and ask you again and you'll say no and then they'll go away. But they keep being so persistent. Now, and I'm not talking about anything that would hurt them or harm them, you know, maybe go over to their friend's house or, or something in that nature, go outside and play or something like that. But sometimes if they continue to be persistent, I'll say, go ahead, boy, go ahead, girl, or whatever it is. And then because they kept coming, they kept coming. 
Now, some would say that I'm kind of wishy-washy anyway, uh, but I'm just saying that them being persistent in this situation, in that situation, allowed them to actually receive and get uh, the blessing that they were trying to receive or go outside or, or whatever the case may be. And, and sometimes that, that uh, persistence pays off. And we hear that in the world, that persistence pays off in the world. But how much more? So Jesus goes on. Let me not jump ahead of my own self. So Jesus goes on and he says, he, he brings it home. He tells them, okay, I'm not just talking about the unjust judge and the widow and how persistent she is. I want you to uh, see the real meat of the matter of what I really am talking about. And he says that uh, if you can see that this judge does this for this woman that consistently uh, is bothering him or consistently bringing the matter before him, then how much more will God avenge his elect? So he gets down to the meat of the matter. He tells them that God will take care of the things. Uh, when we cry day and night, he hears those cries. He hears those prayers and he will take care of us. He will take care of us. And then Jesus even said, speedily. So he will take care of us immediately. The things that the needs that we are crying about. Now, some of those wants and desires that he said he would take care of that too, but maybe not as speedily as the things that we truly, truly need. Why is it so important for, for him to do that? Jesus talks about so that you'll have faith, that you'll, your faith will continue. Your faith will grow in the Lord. And so, so the lesson aim is not only just about prayer and being consistent in prayer, but it's also about our faith. Now we know that prayer, you know, prayers like being consistent and bombarding heaven with our prayers and requests, they need to line up with the word of God. So I'm not saying that, you know, I need a Benz, I need a Benz, I need a Benz until you get a Benz. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about those heartfelt needs. Or let's say, for instance, you know that there's a homeless man on the on the street corner and you pray, Lord God, bless him. Um, if the Lord leads you to do something else, then do that. But you continue to pray for that person to, to maybe find housing or find shelter uh, that would fit him or suit him or, you know, some of the things that are happening in the school, uh, like bullying and, and different things of that nature. And you pray on those kind of situations, domestic violence, pray over the finances, pray over the things that you know are going on that are not right in the world. We need to be praying, saints. We need to be praying. And of course, faith is, is believing in Christ, believing in God, believing in the Holy Spirit, believing that those things do exist and that they're here to help us have a better life, to do what God is calling us to do, remembering the sacrifice that Jesus made, uh, keeping, keeping in mind of the power, the keeping power of the Holy Spirit. And all of these are tools to assist us in this life on this earth. Now we need to be living here as well as living, uh, as well as preparing for the afterlife and how, how God sent his son to redeem us back to him. They cry day and night. We cry day and night about the injustices of the world. Or are we? Are we crying and asking God to intervene in the lives of others? Or are we making a shopping list, a grocery list, and asking him <coughs> to intervene just for us. Uh, there's a saying that I said many years ago, my four and no more. But God doesn't want us to be only concerned about our friends and our family or even our jobs. But it is our duty to pray for others, to ask God to intervene in their behalf. Many times you see Jesus is moved with compassion on just seeing uh, the state of the people, seeing the hunger, seeing the pain, healing and teaching the word of God. Is That's what we are supposed to be doing. Even if you're not a preacher, a minister, evangelist, prophet, or, or any of those things, you can still minister. And the biggest ministry it's people, what people see you do and people, what, see people, what, people, what you say 
as well. And is your word is what you're saying and what you're doing lining up with the will of God. I'm not saying we're to be perfect because as long as we're on this earth, we're not perfect. But we should be striving to show more of Jesus in our life. That the people, I don't want people to see me. I want them to see the Jesus in me. Because that's the only thing that's going to save them. If they look at me and they watch me, they may falter. But it's my prayer that they see Jesus in me. That I can point them to Jesus. There's a... a um, Scripture in the Bible, it says, that if he be lifted up, that he would draw all men unto him. Are we lifting him up? Are we praying? Are we asking God to intercede for our fellow man that is in a situation or state that's even worse than our own? Or are we making a shopping list and asking God to bless my four and no more? The widow and the unjust judge the widow cried out to the unjust judge and he blessed how much more can we cry out to our father in heaven and he will do what what is according to his will for our lives so to this week i just want you to think about some of the things the injustices that are going on and i want you to take just a moment or two throughout the week more than once through this week, let's say two or three times this week, I want you to pray for somebody other than yourself and your family. And I want you to pray about these injustices that are going on in our lives. I'm going to name just a few. The bullying, imbalance of power, job discrimination, false accusations, vow breaking, domestic violence, illegal activity, abuse of the elderly, um, I just want to want us to begin to pray even the more about the things that are going on. And obviously, you're going to pray about those things that are going on in your life as well. But I want us to take some time to think about someone else. You got it pretty good compared to them if you think about it. So they need our prayers. And if God moves you with compassion to do something more, make sure he's leading you, then do more. So, the, un the widow and the unjust judge, Luke 18, 1 through 8. And you guys have a blessed week.